with a weight at. Before I ran up in the building, talking way back. I stay late night, dreaming about the payback. All I wanna do is get rich, yeah, 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 yo. I ain't looking for a lick, hey, yeah, yeah, yo. About to rob him for the shit, hey, yeah, yeah, yo. Want the rope on the wrist, hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Piff on the Blitz, episode two. Welcome to the show. Check it out. Check it out. Mike check, okay. Mike check, one, two, okay. Man, what an ugly week. What an ugly week that was. If you picked DraftKings lineup B that I gave you, we, we fucked that one all up, okay? You shouldn't have picked B. I was telling you to pick A anyways. If you picked either one, you're fucked. You were screwed. So, you know, first and foremost, I'll apologize for that. Uh, looking over the picks that we had, we ended up going 9-6. Not bad. Of course, 9-6 because the Bucks and the Dolphins didn't play. So what are you proud of? Well, looking back on week one, I'm proud of a few things. Mostly, I'm proud of my Eagles pick. The Eagles beat the Redskins. They were my wild card spot. Remember when I did that? Remember when I did that? But some people had a bone up their ass about it. Some people weren't very fond of the Eagles' choice for wild card. You pick the Eagles. You pick the Eagles for a wild card spot. <laughs> Are you joking? Are you kidding? All the Cowboys fans were sure upset about that. Well, you know what? I don't care. I didn't care when I said that. Didn't care at all. But still, okay, you're upset that I picked the Eagles as a wild card spot. Chill with it, bro. Because now I'm changing it up. I'm changing it up for you. I'm doing it all for you, okay? No. There was. There was explain the Cowboys had a suspension looming okay without Zeke the Cowboys are a 9 and 17 fuck you go to hell without Zeke he runs that offense now he's back they don't know if he's playing week two they don't know if he's playing to week nine he might be out next week he could be he could be there nobody knows what the fuck is going on but now now it seems as if Zeke is playing when I did the episode he wasn't playing so now he's playing okay for sure for sure yeah for sure he had over 100 yards for sure against a tough defense. Caught some balls for sure. Almost scored a couple touchdowns for sure. Had some boneheaded play calling for sure that held him back for sure. But it's an overview. It's a breakdown before you really know what's happening for sure. So put your hands down. Save your fucking questions till the end. You picked the Giants. You picked the Giants to win the division. They look like they didn't know where they were. <laughs> I really underestimated how bad that offensive line really was. I mean, we had a group. We had a group of offensive lines who really didn't care for their quarterback very much at all this week. It's like they wanted to see him get killed. It's like they didn't care who was quarterback. We don't need a quarterback, right? Cincinnati, Seattle, Arizona, Indianapolis, Houston. Holy shit. You guys let your quarterback get destroyed. The Giants' offensive line was embarrassing. That's a that's a group of nobodies on Dallas's D-line that tore it up. I mean, D-Law's coming through. He's looking really good. But, I mean, still, uh, you, if you're not a Cowboys fan, you probably can't even name anybody on the line. Taco didn't show up. That was disappointing. So the offensive line's kind of screwed us. It screwed us in a lot of areas. But, like I said, we were 9-6 and six still. We did some good picks. We did some good stuff. We picked the Steelers. They won. We didn't get right on the cards because their offensive line was trash. Uh, Atlanta, they, they barely won. The Bears could have pulled it off. I did pick the Chargers to win, and if they would, if young Hoku would have came through, we would have been probably looking at an overtime win. But I'm good with the picks. We're well over 500. we We're on our way. Do not panic, okay? Don't panic. Don't start dropping all sorts of players because they didn't show up week one. You know how it is. And I told you last week, you got to take the information you were given. You got to figure out what it means. What, it, what does it mean, though? And then you fix it and we move forward. Do not start dropping all your players. Chill on it. Okay. If you don't drop Tyler Eifert, don't do it. Okay. Don't drop. Don't just start dropping players like you don't know what the fuck's going on. So, okay, moving on. Correct questions? No. Just a correction. Oh, well, that's fantastic. What's the correction? The correction was that I called Mitch Trubisky, Mitch Trubinsky. Big deal. Mike Lennon was tearing it up anyhow. So there's the correction. So I'll stop doing that. I'll stop calling him Mitch Trubinsky. His name's Mitch Trubisky. Does that make you happy? Why the fuck do you care? <laughs> it's not a starting quarterback, right? All right, moving on. We ranted about a little bit about the week one, the trash week that it was. A lot, of, a lot of people lost. They were fucking mad about it. Get over it because you have to move on and focus on the week ahead. 
So I've got a new DraftKings lineup for you. <coughs> it's ass. <laughs> no, it's probably the best lineup you've ever heard in your life. But Cheryl Crow, what actually happened to her? She was actually really good. I kind of enjoyed her songs about Sunset Boulevard and things like that. But she's broke. Now, maybe. I don't, I don't know. I just made that up. Speaking of breaks, David Johnson is out for a couple months. It's not a break. It's a dislocation. I don't care. He's gone. He's gone for two months. If you're an owner of David Johnson, RIP, bro. Your season's over. <laughs> You'll probably be okay if you know what you're doing on the waivers. There's a couple running backs in my league that are available. And, uh, oh, wait, somebody dropped 100 points on one of them? Oh, well, then you're screwed because it's a waiver accusation budget plan. And you don't have the funds or you didn't put the funds down. You lost the auction. All right, what the fuck are you even talking about? Why don't you get to the real shit that we really want to know about? Who the fuck do I play? How do I get all the points? And how do I get all the wins? I just want to finish this season out as the champ MVP slash GOAT. So you want me to get to the real shit? You want me to stop fucking around with Cheryl Crow? Got it. What does Cheryl Crow have to do with fucking my matchups for week two, Piff? And Mr. Piff, you fuck my lineup up all the way. It's ass. Shit all over the place. Everything is trash, and I hate you. Fuck off. Go to hell. Cheryl Crow has everything to do with anything. Right? I'm insane. I'm a fucking insane maniac, and you shouldn't listen to anything I say. So stop. Stop listening. Delete this fucking podcast from your phone. Okay? Wait a couple seconds. Wait a couple. Okay, they left. Okay, they left. Fuck them. We've got the real shit. We're about to get into it. The Cheryl Crow thing, that was just a diversion for the fuck boys. Now that we got rid of them, I can give you all the gold. This episode is brought to you by Shinerbach. Oh, every drop of Shiner. You want to drink with me? You want to know all the lineups? Come get some Shinerbach with um, drinking it all, all night on the field, having the time of my life. Lightweight. Super featherweight. Two beers, and I'm blacking out. 30 minutes in, Eli Manning face. Eli Manning face. Eli, how could you do that to me, bro? <laughs> fading, I'm fading. In the distance, I can see the week two schedule, and that's where I'm trying to get to. But before I do that, pour me up, right? Put it in my cup. Cooper cup. If you're gonna fucking act like you knew what was going on with him, you better spell... Put some fucking respect on his name. Spell his goddamn name right. It's Cooper Cup with a K. K U P P. I called it first. And uh, he's going to lead the league in receptions. I said that. Did I say that? I'm saying it now. Nobody cares about Corey Davis. He no fucking baby. He men. Cooper Cup. All right. Okay. Eight minutes in, I'm being a dick. Not telling you shit. <laughs> really. We got rid of the fuck boys, so we're ready to roll. Okay, so three things are on the agenda. Number one, we're going to go over all the week two games. We're going to go and break down those matchups. We're going to tell you the players to watch. We're going to give you our picks. Now, that's important. We're 9-6. We're well, we're well over 500. Okay, so of course you want that. Then we got the DraftKings lineup, right? It's not going to be as bunk as last week, okay? It's going to be way better. But I'm no expert. Disclaimer. I'm not an expert. I'm not a savant, Okay. Anybody who tells you they know exactly what's going to happen every week, they're lying to you. They're lying to your face. But I've been watching football since I was on the tee, okay? I thought the tee was a football. I, I, I watch a lot of football. I watch way more than I should. I know way more than I should. But I'm not an expert. So take it as you, take it, take it fucking free will. You do what you want, okay? But we're going to go over the week two matchups. We're going to go over the picks, uh... Then we're going to go over a DraftKings lineup. We said that. We said that. Yeah, you fucking said that. Let's go. But I'm going to do something interesting this week. I'm going to focus in on two heavyweight matchups. Xavier Rhodes and Antonio Downtown Brown are facing off this week. Minnesota and Pittsburgh. We're going to key in on that matchup. It's interesting. Okay. I'm going to tell you who I think the winner is going to be. Who's going to get that knockout. And then on the other end, we have Des Bryant versus Aqib Talib. Whoa. I'm not always going to focus on corners on wide receiver. I'm not always going to focus on that matchup. But for this week, are you kidding me? These are phenomenal matchups. Xavier Rosen, Antonio Brown. Des Bryant against Aqib Tlaib. 
Those are interesting matchups. Those are, that's what I want to talk about. You're going to watch the game, and there's a lot of things going on. There's 22 players on the field. But these four players, they're going to duke it the fuck out. And you need, to, you need to know a little bit of the background. You need to get hype for this shit. If you're a football head, if you've got a f- head that's shaped as a football, then you're all about Des Bryant and Aqib Tlaib. You're all about Xavier Rhodes and Antonio Brown. So we're going to break that shit down real quick. All this mainstream shit, all this fucking Jason Whitlock type of shit. We're not going to roll on that. We're not going to talk about all that stuff. We're going to focus in on some cool shit. Okay, interesting matchups. So let's focus in on these matchups first. And then we'll get to the week two picks, and then we'll get to the DraftKings lineup, and then we'll wrap it up. We'll wrap that shit up, okay? We'll double wrap it. So first and foremost, I, I want to start off with Xavier Rhodes and Antonio Brown. In the blue corner, standing six foot one, weighing 215 pounds from the city of Miami, Xavier Rhodes, corner for the Minnesota Vikings. In the red corner, Antonio Brown, 5'10", 186 pounds, also from the city of Miami. Did you know that both these players grew up in the same city? They went to the same high school. Brown left in 2005, Rhodes left in 2009. So they they weren't at the school at the same time. And when you look at the height and the weight, you're thinking, "Eh, Antonio Brown's a little bit lighter, he's probably going to be faster. Keep in mind, Xavier Rhodes hit 22.40 miles per hour on an interception return last season. It was clocked as like... It was game-changing. It was clocked as, like, one of the fastest times. So he's technically one of the fastest players at top speed. At top speed. His nickname is Smoke, and it it seems reasonable to assume one who earns such a moniker can run at a high rate of speed. He's a burner. It's the fastest any player has hit on a scoring play in 2016. Um, It's not going to bring him into the who's the fastest conversation, but it's still impressive for a corner. Uh, his closing speed lacked urgency, according to uh, draft experts. So when you look at the height and weight, you, you probably would figure Antonio Brown would be the faster player. Um, but Xavier Rhodes has a little bit of a reputation when it comes to speed. But when it comes to acceleration and agility, which is an important part of route running, I think Antonio Brown probably has the edge. Because he's lighter, he can probably cut quicker, he's got a little bit better acceleration, I'm willing to bet. So I'll give you the background on Xavier Rhodes a little bit. Last week, he shut down Michael Thomas. So he's already ready for 2017. Last year, he shut Beckham all the way down. Beckham didn't want anything to do with Rhodes. Okay. 47.0 passer rating when they target him. So he's keeping it on the low. Problem with Xavier Rhodes is he commits too many penalties. He's got a lot of PIs. Okay. He's a little bit maybe too physical. He's got the size advantage on Antonio Brown. But Antonio Brown has the number one hands in the league. Right above Larry Fitzgerald. This dude, this dude only dropped seven passes the last two years. That's 249 targets, and he dropped only seven. Number one hands in the league. So you're dealing with somebody that's lighter, probably quicker on their feet. And uh, last week he had 11 catches and 182 yards. So he's already ready for 2017. So Rhodes is ready for 2017. Brown checked in. He's ready for 2017. The weigh-ins check out. And now these guys are going to battle. Antonio Brown averages 2.26 yards per route. The league averages 1.25 over the last five years. So Antonio Brown, he's like the number one receiver. No, he is the number one receiver. And Xavier Rhodes, he's got a lot on his plate. So Xavier Rose got a little bit of a taste of number one wide receivers last year. He did really well. He stopped Beckham. So what does Xavier Rhodes excel in? He excels on when a wide receiver decides to run a post or corner route. They ju- it just won't work on Xavier Rhodes. Eight targets that were thrown to him. There was only one completion and four picks. Most of those picks were when he was in zone. He even got a pick when he was in man. I think Allen Robinson was the only player to like beat him on a post or corner route, and it was like for 17 yards. Allen Robinson's hurt. He's down for the year. So you don't have to worry about that. But eight targets, one completion, four picks. He's a shutdown corner. But his hands are going to be completely full with Antonio Brown. Number one wide receiver in the league. So this is the biggest test that you've got this year. So how's he going to fare? How's he going to fare? Well, when I looked at the Xavier Rhodes-Odell-Beckham matchup last year, I didn't really feel like Rhodes was like a jar. 
I didn't really feel like he was a trash talker. I didn't really feel like he, I mean, he, yeah, he hit Beckham a little bit late here and there. But Beckham was totally mentally out of his fucking zone. And Rhodes did that. But Antonio Brown's not Odell Beckham. He's not kneeling and trying to propose to a field goal post. He's not having a nervous breakdown week in and week out like Odell Beckham will give you. Antonio Brown's composed. I don't think he's going to be affected by Xavier Rhodes' buffoonery. Antonio Brown, he's got a good head on his shoulders. And he does head and shoulders, I think. So, this is a really interesting matchup for me, because you have a guy that's up and coming, Xavier Rhodes, he's younger, he's looking to be that new lockdown corner, and he's going against the number one wide receiver, so we're going to see what it's all about, we're really going to see what it's all about, and the Minnesota-Pittsburgh game, just in general, is a really good game, it's interesting, because it was a really hard pick for me this week, Steelers and Vikings, Vikings have a good defense, they have an elite defense, it's top tier, Steelers have a high octane offense, I mean, when I looked at this matchup, I saw Martavis Bryant probably being a key factor. You know, he didn't show up very much last week, but, you know, he's a deep threat. And the Vikings bite. They bite on the play action, and, and Martavis Bryant will probably be the key factor. For the Steelers' offense to move the ball, you know, and they also got to load the box for Le'Veon Bell, right? But Xavier Rosen and Antonio Brown is going to be interesting because, you know, the, the number one wide receiver versus an up-and-coming corner, a really standout corner, and... uh Another interesting thing about this matchup is that they worked out together this, this offseason. So, you know, training together, working out in Miami, having that connection, to, uh, you know, of going to the same high school, I'm really looking forward to this matchup. So now it comes down to the, the prediction. Who do you think is going to knock out who? Who do you think is going to do good? Well, I'm going to give this one to Antonio Brown. I'm going to say that he does really well. Um, I don't want to go and predict touchdowns. Uh, those are tough. Those are tough to predict. Um, but I think Antonio Brown wins this matchup overall. I think when you watch the game, you'll see that Xavier Rhodes just can't. They're not going to run post and corner routes. They're going to try to. Uh, they're going to try to have him cross the field, beat him with some, beat him with some crossing routes. Antonio Brown's going to win this matchup. Xavier Rhodes is phenomenal. He's really good. Don't be surprised if the Steelers game plan more for Martavis Bryant. They find Jesse James, uh, things like that. They look for matchups so they can win. Um, but Antonio Brown overall, yeah, I think he's going to see some yards on Xavier, Ro- uh, on Xavier Rose, but it also depends on the uh, game plan. But in this matchup, this heavyweight matchup that we've got going on, I'm going to give the nod to Antonio Brown. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens there. But, uh, yeah, really interesting that they went to the same high school and now they're facing off. But Xavier Rhodes, uh, he spent time in the offseason working out with Antonio Brown. So he knows some of the moves. I don't think Antonio Brown told him all the moves. He kept a couple secrets. He did work out with Odell Beckham. So Rhodes is in rare form. Um, But the problem you're going to have with Xavier Rhodes is he's a little bit too physical sometimes. He commits too many penalties. That brought his uh, player focus rating down. So I, I imagine he'll have a pass interference or two. And like I said, I think the Steelers' game plan is going to move a little bit away from Antonio Brown. He got a lot of attention last week which is warranted. But this week against Xavier Rhodes, they've got plenty of weapons. So I think they'll spread it out. Um, but it'll be a good matchup, a you know, week two matchup. We'll get, to, we'll get to that later when we do the picks. But Xavier Rhodes, Antonio Brown, that's what you want to watch in the morning. That's uh, grade A shit. All right, moving on. Now we're going to get into the second matchup. And I, like I said, I'm not always going to pick wide receivers and corners. Uh, Sometimes I'm going to pick offensive linemen and defensive linemen. Sometimes I'm going to pick quarterbacks versus defenses. Sometimes I'm going to pick different matchups. What I think is the most important for the week um, and what you need to pay attention to. The second matchup I have is Des Bryant from the Dallas Cowboys versus Aqib Tlaib. And what's interesting about these two is they played before. They played a couple times before. Uh, In the first matchup that they had, I think Tlaib was maybe with the Bucs. And he got a pick in the last matchup. He feels like he won that matchup. Uh, Des Bryant went 6 for 62, so he had 6 catches and 62 yards. Um, I think Tilly was maybe on, I can't remember if he was on the Patriots when he played Des Bryant second, but this is going to be really good because Des Bryant's catching a lot of flack already because of the lack of chemistry he has with Dak Prescott. He didn't have a big week last week. He's really, you know, he's, he's got a lot to prove. He's got a lot to prove. He's a physical wide receiver, and he's a jar. He loves to talk shit. You saw him with, with Jenkins last week doing that. He does it with Norman. Tlaib's not going to be any different, but Tlaib's going to give him the business back. 
this is even more interesting to me than the Xavier Rhodes Antonio Brown matchup. Xavier Rhodes and Antonio Brown seem like more like friends. It's just a more competitive uh, relationship there. With Des Bryant and Akeem Talib, it could get f- it could get physical. It could get to punches. It could lead to ejection. Who knows? Akeem Talib might poke his fucking eye out, spit on him, and shit on him. Who knows? But in the red corner, we have Des Bryant at six foot two, two hundred and eighteen pounds, out of the University of Oklahoma State. In the was that the red corner or blue corner? In the blue corner, we have Akeem Talib, six foot one, two hundred and five pounds, out of the University of Kansas. Here's what you need to know about this matchup: It's going to be physical. There's going to be a lot of shit talking. Trust that. Des Bryant hasn't worked out the chemistry with Dak Prescott. I don't feel like it's in the best interest of the Dallas Cowboys to target Des Bryant. Okay, I feel like you're gonna use Beasley on some crossing patterns. I feel like you might be able to hit Bryce Butler deep. I feel like Jason Witten's a good valve, especially if Von Miller's coming in on the rush. But Dallas is going to have to be careful targeting Des Bryant because Akeem Tlaib will take it back for six. It's a physical matchup. I'm really excited about this. The game's going to be good, too. It's going to be close. Uh, elite defense versus an elite offense. Again, same situation as the Vikings and Steelers. Two very good matchups this week. This is what you need to know about Des Bryant. Okay. He hasn't really, like I said, built the chemistry with Dak Prescott. He's got a lot to prove. Um, he got a good warm-up with Jenkins last week. I think he won the battle. Uh, Jenkins had a P.I. and Des got a couple cl- clutch catches, but he didn't kill any yards. He didn't do that great. He's got a lot to prove. Des is the sensitive wide receiver when it comes to top DBs. Let me tell you why. From the year 2014 to 2016, yes, I know he was fucking injured, but from the year 2014 to 2016 versus bottom corners, the bottom 25 type corners, he had 32 catches, 578 yards, and 12 touchdowns on like 69 targets. Versus the top corners, he had 30 catches, 376 yards, and only one touchdown. Whenever Des Bryant faces a top corner, which is what Akib Talib is, he doesn't produce. I'm just going by numbers. I'm just going by the stats. The dude doesn't pull in fucking touchdowns when he goes against top corners. It gets... It's like, like uh, what Odell Beckham. Like it, it, These wide receivers, they, it, they let it get into their fucking head. When they're playing bottom corners, it's all day. It's throw it up, catch it over you. When you're playing a top corner, it's a different thing. And for Des Bryant, it's definitely different. He's one of the most sensitive wide receivers when it comes to playing a top corner. He just can't show up when a top corner is facing him. These guys played in college, too. They, when Des was at Oklahoma State in 2007, uh, they played uh, Kansas. And Aqib Tlaib was on the Kansas team. Kansas ended up winning by a good amount. Uh, Des Bryant had, like, a touchdown in 155 yards and, like, eight catches or something like that. But he wasn't on to leave. I went back and watched the game. He wasn't on to leave. He was on other corners. So these guys have a bit of a history. Um, and like I said, they played before. But what you need to know about Des is just, like I said, when he faces top corners, he just doesn't show up. And here's what you need to know about Akeem Tlaib. He excels on third downs. Dallas likes to throw to Des Bryant on third downs on those slant routes. Okay. But Tlaib excels on third downs, and he's physical as fuck. He's a top corner. He was a top. Cor- he was a number two coverage corner last year. He had like one of the best coverage ratings. I don't think very much has changed from last year to this year. What does he do best? Defends hitches and defends comebacks. He's the top corner when it comes to hitches and comebacks. So I don't expect Des Bryant to run any hitches or comebacks in this game. He'll take it back for six. He'll fucking make you pay for it. Uh, Tlaib is just, he's a really good corner. And in this defense, he's so much better than he was when he was with Tampa or New England. And he flashed when he was with New England. But the fact that Denver has such a good rush and the no-fly zone, don't expect Des Bryant to do very much this week. And then, of course, you know, there's going to be a lot of talk about, oh, is Des Bryant, is he, yeah, this and that, this and that. He's, he's Dude, he faced Jenkins week one, and now he's going to face Tlaib week two. Don't. You know, don't drop him. He'll he'll show up, but I think I guess that leads and tells you who I'm gonna pick. It's a keep to leave. I think he's gonna completely shut down Dez. Uh, for the most part, I think Dez will get a couple catches probably. If you want to be to keep to leave, it seems to me that you want to cross the field. That you want to try to. Dez is gonna have to. Dez is physical. He's gonna have to beat him. He's not gonna beat him deep. 
Uh, I don't think I don't think Tlaib's gonna let that happen. I, okay, let's say let's say Des Bryant beats him deep. Uh, there's no touchdowns going to Des Bryant this week. I find it hard to believe that Des Bryant will be able to catch on to keep Tlaib in the red zone. So in this matchup, I'm gonna give it to Tlaib. So in the first matchup, I gave it to Antonio Brown. This time, I'm going with the corner. I'm going with Tlaib. Wow, what would happen if Tlaib and Antonio Brown faced off? I'd give it to Antonio Brown, just in case you were wondering. But yeah, Dez, dude, your stats are so bad when you play top corners, and I just don't see you overcoming that this week in Denver. I think they're going to grind Zeke like they usually do. I think their game plan is going to have to consist of uh, Beasley and different weapons. But yeah, it boils down to just Tlaib's efficiency on third downs, his, uh, his ability to just be super physical, and more so than most corners in the league. And Des Bryant just being so sensitive to top corners when it comes to stats and numbers, just it was kind of an easy pick. But it's going to be a fist fight, nevertheless. So enjoy those fucking matchups. Enjoy these games. And, and, and you know, when you're watching these games, take a look at those guys because they're going to be fucking battling out there on the corner. And, and that's why I wanted to pick those two, two matchups for this week. All right, so we got that out of the way. We gave you the little bit of a deep analysis and goo on uh, some key matchups this week that I think are important. They're going to be important to the outcome of the game. If Antonio Brown just, you know, does well on Xavier Rhodes, expect the Steelers to win. If Des Bryant somehow figures out a way to beat Tlaib, expect the Cowboys to win. If Tlaib shuts Bryant down and Denver's defense being as elite as it is, you know, is able to you know, hold Zeke, then expect Denver to win. Expect things to happen, right? Okay. Week two, let's go into the picks. We'll get we'll get the picks out of the way. We'll do the quick breakdown, and then we'll get into the DraftKings uh, Draft lineup. So week two, Bengals and Texans on Thursday night. Looking at that game, you saw the Bengals' offensive line was a little bit of a disaster last week. It didn't look so good. They didn't put up uh, any points at all. So... You know, week two, it's about time to put some points up. Uh, they're playing the Texans, who I think the Texans just lost Brian Cushing. Uh, they've got a bunch of players on concussion protocol. J.J. Watt dislocated his finger. It's somewhere inside of him. It's all, As long as it's inside of me, I could put J.J. Twats back out on the field. In this game, I'm going to give it to the Bengals. 21, Texans 19. Hopkins is going to have a good game. Lamar Miller is probably going to get some points. Ultimately, I just feel like the Bengals have more offensive weapons than the Texans. A rookie quarterback... Um, you know, it's going to have some growing pains. Thursday night game. All right, moving on to the Browns and the Ravens. I'm going to pick the Ravens in this. I'm going to give them 23. I'm going to give the Browns 17. I think the Browns got something good going on. I think they have a good offensive line. It's going to be able to, uh, it's going to be able to uh, stifle the Ravens defense quite a bit, but, uh, ultimately the Ravens just have a better team. They just have a better team put together. The Browns are still young. Browns have a decent coaching staff. I'm going to give the Ravens the win. All right, going on to the Bucks and the Bears. And, and for the Ravens and Browns matchup, who, who do you want to watch? I think Corey Coleman's going to do good for the Browns. I think Crowell will find his uh, he'll, he'll find his place in there to get some yards. I think for the Ravens, you to pay attention to Mike Wallace. I think he'll fly off the uh, fly off the charts, whatever. What the fuck am I talking about? Okay. Ah, Danny Woodhead's out for six to eight weeks. Wah! Okay, you know that. All right, Bucks Bears. Bucks are, uh, they were on a fucking sabbatical. Uh, Hurricane Watch. Uh, now they're back, and they're ready to take on the Bears. Um, I give them the win. Um, I don't like the fact that the Bucks and the Dolphins had a week had a week off before the season started. I feel like every other team's in a little bit of a game shape, and that they're not. That It might take them, might take them a half you know, to get up to full speed. I'm going to still give them the win, 21 to 13, in the Mike Glennon revenge matchup. Uh, for the Bucks, I think Mike Evans is going to have a big day. I think Deshaun Jackson might have a couple nice catches. Uh, the Bucks need to get Doug Martin back, because when they get Doug Martin back, it's going to help Winston out even more. And the Bucks are an interesting team to watch. So I give them 21, I give the Bears 13. Steelers, Vikings, we talked a little bit about that. I told you all about the Xavier Rhodes, about the Antonio Brown matchup. I think it's going to be good. My pick for the game is the Steelers, 17, the Vikings, 13. I think it's going to be a little scoring matchup. It'll be interesting. Um, I think Antonio Brown wins the matchup against Xavier Rhodes. I'm going to give the win to the Steelers. Saints-Patriots. The Patriots are going to be fucking uh, unstoppable this week. I think that that last week was so embarrassing. Bill Belichick and the defensive coordinator 
will bring it all together. I see the Patriots getting 30. I see the Saints getting 10. So the Patriots are my pick this week. Brady's going to get back on track for sure. Danny Amendola, Chris Hogan's going to get on track for sure. But the guy to watch is going to be Gronk because the mismatch is ridiculous. I want to see Kenny Vaccaro try to fucking take Gronk's head off. It's going to be funny. Hey, he tried to take some heads off last week. I don't think he's going to last very long in this league trying to take heads off like he does. Uh, especially when you get a guy like Gronk, uh, who's a little bit bigger. Right, 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 right. Fuck yeah. Chiefs and the Eagles. This is going to be a really good matchup. Uh, I'm going to give the game to the Chiefs. I'm going to say 28-17 Chiefs over the Eagles. <laughs> yeah. Tyreek Hill's going to have a big day. I think Kareem Hunt picks up where he left off. I think he has a good day. Carson Wentz is a good quarterback. The Eagles are a good team. Their defense is uh, all over the place, and I think it's going to be a little different than you know the matchup the Chiefs had to face last week with the Patriots. I see, um, I see Tyreek. Like I said, Tyreek Hill having a good day. Chiefs defense is going to, in the end, be enough to win. And uh, yeah, 28-17 Chiefs. Over to the Jaguars and the Titans. I think the Titans are going to bounce back this week. I think they're going to get a 20-10 to 10 win over the Jags. Jags' defense was solid. They were solid, but, you know, maybe Houston's offensive line just really isn't that good. And the fact that they don't have a quarterback, you know, played into that as well. I think the Jags are getting a little hyped. I think Bortles is going to come back down to earth. He was cackling and rolling blunts at halftime. He was so excited because he was getting hella wins over the Houston Texans. It's not going to be that way this week for you, bud. Mariota is going to find Corey Davis for a touchdown. Derrick Henry is going to light that shit up. Titans 20, Jags 10. Colts Cardinals. Oh, Carson Palmer's elite? The fuck are you on? You're smoking some of that wacky tacky shit. Uh, what the fuck is wacky tacky shit, Piff? Uh, I don't know anything about that. Marijuana's illegal. Uh, Cardinals 40, Colts 0. <laughs> no. Let's be realistic. Cardinals 40, Colts 20. Uh, we'll give them some points. I think T.Y. Hilton gets a catch or two. Um, I want to see Mac. I want to see Mac and Gore. Like I want to see him split carries a little bit more. I'm going to give the Cardinals the game. Uh, just off the fact that Andrew Luck isn't available. Nobody knows when he will be. Nobody knows really what's going on with that. Cardinals offensive line is suspect, and the Colts D-line is underrated. I think the Colts defense did a pretty good job in the first quarter against the Rams, but uh, how long can you stay on the field? Your offense isn't doing dick. So uh, Cardinals, I'm going to the, I'm gonna give them the win there. Uh, the Colts are in a fucking downward spiral. They might be worse than the Jets. <laughs> wow. Panthers-Bills, this is going to be a good matchup. Two good defenses. Uh, the Bills are at home, and uh, if I were you, I'd stay away from LaShawn McCoy. I think he's going to have a decent game, but I don't think he's going to, like, explode or anything. The, you know, the Panthers did hold the Niners to, like, three points last week. <laughs> Cam showed that his shoulder was shit. He threw the ball all over the fucking place. He missed a lot of opportunities. Um, that's going to hurt him, um, but I don't think it hurts him enough to lose the game. I think the Panthers win this 13-7. to I might regret that pick. Uh, Calvin Benjamin probably finds the end zone. And, oh, God, oh. I hope Greg Olson finds the fucking end zone. He's my fantasy tight end, and he did ass shit last week. Okay, Chargers Dolphins. Uh, Dolphins on a sabbatical as well, the Hurricane Watch. and uh, But I'm going to give him the win. That's another one I might regret. That was a tough decision. But uh, Jake Cutler's going to find Devontae Parker for a touchdown and some yards. Uh, J- Jarvis Landry's going to throw a fit. Uh, but, like, the J-Train's going to go off. And uh, the Dolphins are going to win 23-20 to over the Chargers. Uh, you know, I feel bad for the Chargers. I feel bad for Phillip Rivers. He's such a great guy. He's a nice guy. He's a hunky guy. But uh, I think he starts off the season 0-2. Dolphins 23, Chargers 20. Um, it'll come down to the last, like, final seconds. And then Young Hoku will miss another field goal. I dropped him. All right, Raiders-Jets. It's an easy pick. Uh, I don't see an upset here. Raiders 28, Jets 10. Yeah, I mean, Amari Cooper's questionable. But he'll probably end up playing. Uh, Crabtree will probably have a good, a good game. Lynch will have a field day. Uh, the Raiders are going to win. Yeah, 28 to 10. Seahawks Niners. That was another fairly easy pick for me. Uh, the Seahawks offensive line is really bad, and the Niners have a good defensive uh, core. I mean, they've got big dudes over on the line. It'll cause some problems for Russell, but it, in the end, the Seahawks will win this one. I think they'll win by at least 10 points. Uh, I, I'm going to say 28 to 10. <laughs> You know, the 49ers are going to be better than they were last year, but not better than the Seahawks. 
not enough to get a win this week. Uh, I think the Seahawks are going to, you know, they're going to be fired up from the loss. Pete Carroll's a good coach. He's going to get them back on track, give the Seahawks the win. Yo, I'm burping like a fool. Uh, pay attention to uh, Thomas Rawls. He's going to be coming back, and he might, uh, he might blow up on the scene. And, uh, yeah, but I think the Seahawks defense gets back to normal, and they shut down the Niners. Okay, Rams, Redskins. This one is my upset. I'm going to give it to the Rams. I do not think the Redskins have it together. I just see a lot of confusion. I see a big loss of offensive weapons, and uh, I'm going to give it to the Rams 21-10. to I think Cooper Cup gets some more catches because he's that dude. He's a pour it up in my cup. He's that, he's that dude, but spell his fucking name right if you're going to talk about him. Uh, so the Rams over the Redskins. Kirk Cousins probably has a decent day, but the Rams' defense with Wade Phillips is just really good. Uh, Sean McVay, is just, uh, he's bringing a lot of energy to that team. I'm going to give it to the Rams, 21-10. Uh, Broncos-Cowboys. This is like the matchup of the week because the Cowboys, they weren't even really on my radar. If I, if I remember correctly, I didn't even pick them as a playoff team. Well, you know, and then Zeke came back. And, you know, for sure Zeke came back. For sure he ran yards. For sure he got touchdowns, right? So... In this game, in high altitude, in Denver, I am going to give it... I fucked... I'm a Cowboys fan, just on the low, okay, uh, for this show. I don't want to, like, go off talking about them too much. And uh, I was kind of disappointed in myself that I picked the, the Giants over the Cowboys. I just expected the Giants... I, I guess I expected Odell to play, and I guess I expected the wide receiver core to show up. They didn't know where the fuck they were. They were ridiculous. Eli Manning was drunk as huge, and the Cowboys uh, Broncos matchup. Now, what the Cowboys did to the Giants last week was great. Uh, their defense showed that it, you know, hey, they they might be looking a little bit better than they were last year. Last year they were a sieve, you know, in pass defense. Uh, the Broncos don't have a quarterback like that. Um, I'm gonna give this game to the Cowboys, 21 to 14. Um, these scores don't mean anything. They do, they really don't. It's just like an idea uh, how close I think the game's going to be. This is going to be a close game. Cowboys are going to win it. Uh, Des Bryant's not going to win the matchup with Tlaib. Um, but the Cowboys are going to win it based on the fact that the Broncos' offense just isn't as good as the Cowboys' offense. It just, and that's the way I like to look at it because, you know, Denver's defense is elite, but you can only hold a team so much uh, with Zeke and... And uh, Wynn and Beasley and Bryan and Williams and Butler. And there's so many weapons on the Cowboys' side that, that I just feel like they're just going to get enough points to win. The problem is they're, you know, they're in high altitude, so it'll be a little bit of a challenge. It's going to be a great game. It's going to be the matchup of the week for me. Cowboys uh, winning 21-14. Um, Packers-Falcons. It's a good Sunday night game. Man, you couldn't ask for a better Sunday night game, right? Um, and in this game, I'm going to give the Packers their revenge win. I'm going to give them a 24-21 to win over the Falcons. A lot of people are picking Atlanta. I'm going to go with Green Bay. The reason I'm going to go with Green Bay is just, you know, I think Rodgers is in the zone. He's a happy camper. He's in commercials with dogs. And uh, that counts, right? Uh, Atlanta, their defense is suspect. I think the Packers will take advantage of that. I think there'll be uh, some late penalties that'll fuck the Atlanta game plan up. Yo, they don't have no gas in the tank. We saw that last last year, didn't we? Yeah. So that gas in the tank will come up again, and the Packers will win 24-21. to Jordy Nelson's going to have a good day. Um, he is seeing a top corner in true font, but I think Nelson sees a touchdown. Actually, scratch that. Take that off the... F- yeah, take that off. No. Devontae Adams gets a touchdown. Randall Cobb has a big day. Um, Jamal Williams, he's going to start seeing the field more for the Packers. The Packers' defense showed up last week against Seattle. Um, well, they took advantage of a bad offensive line. They're going to have their hands full with Julio, but uh, yeah, I give it to the Packers 24-21. And on to the Monday night game. This is an interesting game because we want to see what the fuck are the Giants all about, really. What are they really about? Giants and Lions. The Lions were really about knocking the Cardinals off, and that was a pick that I fucked up last week. The Lions are better than they were last year? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, Kenny Galladay looks really good. I think they need to continue to use him in the game plan. Um, and, but against the Giants, their defense is a very good defense. And so the Lions are going to have to use all their weapons to win this one. Um, I'm going to pick the Lions. I'm going to give them uh, 24. I'm going to give the Giants 17. And uh, the reason for this is that I just think the Lions will take advantage of that offensive line. If the Giants... I talked about this a little bit last episode. I said I like the Giants for the division based on how good their defense is. And, you know, Eli Manning's a Super Bowl winning quarterback. He knows how to come back. 
And the reason I picked him for the division is just because, you know, the talent they, that they have, you know. But Eli Manning hasn't figured out that Brandon Marshall, you know, he's not going to separate. Just throw him the fucking ball. And once Eli Manning figures that out, they'll be a little bit better. But I, their running game in their offensive line is so bad. I hate that I picked them as division winners. Um, I'm not going to go back on it, but I just feel like I said that was going to be the downfall. You can throw the ball all you want, but if you can't run the ball, if you can't protect Eli, then you're not going to win games. And, you know, maybe it's one of those situations where the Giants start out, you know, one and four. But, but you know, one and four, it's whatever. The West Coast offense that they were using last year, it really worked for them. And it got them to the playoffs against the Packers. They had to go to Lambeau, and they, they fell short. But uh, Ben McAdoo's a good coach. Um, they've got enough talent to where I just think you know, we're, we're going to find out what the Giants are all about week two. If Odell's playing, he's still not going to be 100%. Guaranteed, his ankle's still going to give him problems. Um, if the Giants lose, I don't think Giants fans should panic. I think they're still in control based on the talent that they have. And, uh, yeah, the Lions might get the – they might steal a win here. Uh, Matt Stafford's f- slinging the ball around, and uh, you should have played him. Um, if you didn't, uh, you fucked up, right? But the, uh, the Lions are going to be the pick here over the Giants. I think they need a couple more weeks to figure it out. Odell needs to get healthy. Uh, that offensive line, the running game, it's going to come back to bite them in the ass eventually. You can win the division, you can go to the playoffs, but if you don't have a good offensive line, you will not win in this league. Straight up. And when you build a team, you really need to start with the lines. And, yeah, we'll talk about that in another episode. But, uh, yeah, so those are the matchups for week two. Some interesting games. The the big games, obviously, the Steelers and Vikings, the Cowboys and the Broncos. Uh, yeah. And the Jags Titans will be interesting as well. Chiefs Eagles and the Giants Lions just to figure out what the identity is. And of course, uh, the Packers and Falcons will be a game of the week as well. If I had to pick a game of the week, I'd say Broncos Cowboys because I just want to see uh, some really good. It's a high octane offense against the number one defense, probably. So. All right, so those are the week two matchups, and uh, like I told you, I would give you a DraftKings lineup. You ready? My quarterback this week is Phillip Rivers. I just think against Miami's pass defense, he's going to have a good day, and for the price, it's right. The price is right. Bob Barker, Phillip Rivers, quarterback. Uh, Running back, I have Tarek Cohen uh, over um, on the Chicago Bears and Leonard Fournette. And yeah, those are some young running backs, but the price is right, and we're going to plug them in. I think the Bears against the Bucks. I think the Bucks being a week off, you know, Cohen will take advantage of that a little bit. And he's all over the place. He's a running back. He's quarterback. He's wide receiver. He's all over the place. I give him a good chance to get some points. Um, they're going to start putting him in the game plan a little bit more, especially after what they saw last week. Fournette, I see him getting a touchdown or two um, in the red zone. So I think he has value there. And for the price, it's right. Bob Parker. Okay, Mike Evans at wide receiver for the Bucks against the Bears. I think he's going to take advantage of that weak matchup. Um, so I see him getting some points. I have Tyreek Hill uh, at wide receiver as well for the Chiefs, and Emmanuel Sanders. Uh, I'm still on this Dallas pass defense. Just prove it to me. You did good last week because uh, the Giants were trash. They didn't have Odell. Prove it to me. Um, Shut down the Denver passing game this week, and then I'll be a believer. So I have Emmanuel Sanders as the third wide receiver, and at tight end, you know I'm going with the Gronk. Because I love the mismatch, and the Patriots have so much to prove. And they're going to be fired up. And it helps that they're going against a really not-so-great pass defense. Um, The Saints are, yeah, they're going to get torn apart. I think Brady's going to be back on that bullshit. I think Gronk's going to be back on that bullshit. I think the Patriots are going to light it up. So I'm going with Gronk at tight end. My flex is going to be Adam Thielen, the most underrated wide receiver in the league. He gets slept on so heavy. And I give him a good chance to get some uh, points against that Pittsburgh pass defense where Joe Hayden (laughs) didn't really do so much, did he, last week? The Browns uh, came close in that one. Coleman got a touchdown. Uh, So, yeah, Adam Thielen's going to be my flex. And uh, it's a pretty decent price for him. And then the defense, I'm going to go with the Pats. Yeah, because after the terrible display last week, you know Bill Belichick's got them right. You know they've got something to prove. They're going to have a fire lit up under their ass. The Pats are going to be a good pick for the the price. So Phillip Rivers, Cohen, Fournette, Mike Evans, Tyreek Hill, Emmanuel Sanders, Gronk, Adam Thielen, and the Pats defense. That's the DraftKings lineup.
And uh, hopefully we do better than we did last week because, fuck, that was a mess. Um, but it's week one, you know. Week one's one of those weeks where, you know, all sorts of crazy shit happens. But we took the information. Okay, we figured out what offensive lines were poor. Uh, we worked around it. We made the adjustments. We're going into week two with that knowledge. So there you have it. The week two picks, the DraftKings lineup, the key interesting matchups to look at, the recap of week one. Hey, thanks for fucking with me, you know. Thanks for tuning in and checking it out, and hopefully you are, it's, hopefully you're taking the information that I give you on the show and you're using it to improve your team. And hopefully I didn't give it to you too fast, okay? I tried to slow it down a little bit because the last episode was light speed. And we had to break down every division. We had to break down every team very quickly. I hope I give it to you a little bit slower this week. I hope you're able to retain some of the information. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how we do after this week. Uh, a lot of good games. A lot of good games. All right, well, let's, uh, let's call it and let's wrap it up, okay? I gave you everything I thought you needed to know for week two. You can follow me on Twitter at MonsterPiff. Go ahead and send me your questions or corrections or complaints. Shoot them at me at MonsterPiff, M-O-N-S-T-E-R-P-I-F-F. And check out Rowdy and the Piff, our podcast show on Mondays, where it's me and Rowdy, and we go over trending topics, some sports, and some other funny shit. Okay? Thanks for checking out the show. Hopefully, uh, I gave you the information you needed for week two. We're going to fucking kill it this week. We're going to fucking kill it this week. Leave them in the dust. This is Piff on the Blitz. I'm out. Peace.